Let's get a move on, everybody. Yeah, you kids heard your father shake a dog leg there now, yes. Kelly, Derek, Bobby, let's go. We're wasting quality family uh, fun time. Yay! We're going to the new zoo! Out of the way, shrimp. Ah! Swell. Spending the entire day with my family. Ugh. Like if that isn't a full-on dry heave. Is a dry heave a good thing? Some car horns I'm selling. Oh, I got a great deal on them. Oops, that's a bird dropping. Can I get one of those horns for my bike? If one more thing goes wrong today, I'm gonna go to pieces. I just know it. Go to pieces? <laughs> Take it easy there, Ruthie. Now, come on, don't worry, Ruthie. Well, your lunch is on me. And we can pick out our junk food at the lunch stand. Yay! This is gonna be a perfect day. Yeah, right, Bubble. <laughs> it's gonna be a perfect day. Quit kicking the back of my seat, Dweeb. I warned you. You do it again, and I'll personally ruin your perfect day. What do you think about that? I know you are, but what am I? Sometimes the kids just gotta say something. Yeah, well, maybe mom and dad will forget and leave you behind. Then you'd end up living in the zoo with the wild animals. Where you belong. Live in the zoo? That might be okay. If I can make the wild animals not so wild. Uh oh These chops are really wild! There now, dear Uncle Ted. Have you forgotten that I am Dr. Bobby Doolittle? The guy who talks to the animals? I am Dr. Bobby Doolittle. Welcome to Animal Talk, the show that lets animals solve their problems. All right, who would like to talk first? We come from dysfunctional families and have low self-esteem, so we act like wild and crazy jerks. What can we do to feel better right now? Well, there's one sure way, and that's... Nookies! You see, Nookies have charms to suit the wild beasts. I'm telling you, folks, it always works for me. Yep, we're having fun now. Look, Babo, the zoo. This is the start of my perfect day. We're here because 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 we're here. Come on, everybody, sing. Never mind. Like we have been waiting in this stupid line for an hour. Whose idea was to come to this lame zoo anyway? What, what's important here is we're trying to spend some time together as a family. Yeah, family, right, hon. But next time, let's say we do it where they have some shade trees. Yeah, yeah I don't know. We're all starting to smell. Oh, 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 I've had the worst day of everybody, and you don't see me complaining. <sighs> the secret to a happy life is positive thinking. Isn't that right, Bobby? Yeah, Ruth. Your breath smells like the stuff between Roger's toes. Ah, that's it. That's the camera on my day. I'm going home. <laughs> what happened? 
Well, there goes the day at the zoo, Howard. We're gonna have to drive her home, don't you know? Yeah, Bobby told Ruthie about her, uh, you know, her, uh, <laughs> bad breath. Way to go, dweeb! <laughs> like smooth move, Bobby. Why is everybody so bad? All I did was tell the truth. <laughs> said such a gee golly thing to Aunt Ruth. Oh, <laughs> where do we go wrong? Uh, Mom, all I did was... Not another word out of you, young man. As soon as we get home, you're going directly to your room and stay there. But all I did was tell the truth. This isn't fair. How can Dad make me go to my room for telling the truth when Dad always says I'm supposed to tell the truth? <laughs> Grown-ups are crazy, Roger. You know what? I think the world would be a really good place if all it had in it was kids. Now that you've successfully completed your mission to Mars, what are your plans, President Bobby? Return to Earth immediately, Vice President Roger. Make it so! Roger! President Bobby, as your Secretary of Defense, I can guarantee no grown-ups tried to sneak back into the country while you were gone. That's okay, Roger. Uncle Ted doesn't count. I mean, real grown-ups, you know, like moms and dads. Good. Now patch me through to the Oval Office. I want to speak to Uncle Ted, the Secretary of Food. How are things on the nutrition front, Uncle Ted? Hey, okay, Babo. The kids in Congress just passed your food legislation. The four official food groups are now chocolate, ice cream, cookies, and anything nacho flavor. Yay! Hi, Mr. President. Your Secretary of Truth here. I took care of enacting your new lying policy. From now on, when any kid tells the truth, they won't get in trouble for it. Hey, Babu. I'm too bad about them sending you to your room. Ah, that's always a bummer. Oh, come on. Don't let it get you down. You're gonna have a great time tomorrow. I'm gonna take you to see the world's largest ball of earwax. It's gonna be on display at the grand opening of Sid's Freaks and Fajitas. Oh. Yeah, I know. Old Ruthie really has a way of punching a hole in a guy's day, doesn't she? <laughs> What I gotta tell you, Bobbo, this is nothing compared to some of the stuff she used to do to me when we were kids. Pulling my hair, giving me pink bellies, making me kiss her frogs. Kiss her frogs? <laughs> Bobby, your mother and I want to talk to you about the situation with Aunt Ruth. But why is there a suggestion? I didn't do anything wrong. Honest, I didn't. Her breath really did smell like the stuff between Roger's toes. <laughs> All I did was tell the truth. Oh, there now, my third to the youngest. I see the problem, Mosky here. Yeah. Well, you think you're always supposed to tell the truth when the truth is that sometimes if you know that telling the gee golly truth will hurt somebody's feelings, well, then what you do is you don't tell the whole gee golly truth. What you do is find a way to kind of, well, y you just get around it by just not saying everything. Did you ever notice the smaller the crime, the bigger the explanation? So, my little manzy, do you understand what I'm saying about telling the truth? No. <laughs>
which gives you the picture on knowing exactly when to tell the truth there. Now then, yet. All that's left is for you to go apologize to Aunt Ruth. And I can drive you over there right now, don't you know? Mm. Oh, for crying in the mud, Bobby, pipe down. Okay, we're at her homestead, Aunt Ruth, and it's time for you to apologize. And so, and, and so, and, and so Mom said I was supposed to tell you I'm sorry, and so I am. And that's it? That's all you have to say? Uh-huh. Is there something bad going to happen now? Are, are you still mad? Mad? How could I be mad? That was the nicest apology. Why, you're just the sweetest little boy in the whole world is all. Martha, now that Bobby and I are getting along so well, what say you let him spend the afternoon with me? Oh, even better. He can spend the night. We'll buy socks and willikers. That'll be just great, Ruth. That way you two can really get to know each other, don't you know? And I'll be back later with these little jammykins. What did I do wrong? Hello? Hey, Bobo. <laughs> I just heard about you getting marooned over at Ruthie's. Ooh, that's a tough break, kid. But just keep thinking about tomorrow and Sid's grand opening, huh? I'll be over there to bail you out first thing in the morning. Thanks, Uncle Dad. No problem. Hey, don't worry, buddy. Ruthie is a weirdo. But it isn't like she's gonna cook you and eat you or anything. Oh, okay. Bye. Oh, this is my lucky day. Look what I found! What do you need to do with this card for? Because I'm going to cook, Bobby. I'm going to cook something really big. Something really big? Oh, it's not like she's going to cook you and eat you or anything. <laughs> and just wait until you hear what it is I'm going to cook. <laughs> Don't be silly. No! Whew. I'm making a big batch of liver and turnip stew. There now. Feel better? Yes, but not much. Oh, Bobby, you're in for a treat today. You're going to get to help me chop up lots and lots of liver and turnips. Saturday is the day I set aside to cook for the less fortunate. They'd be more fortunate if she didn't make them eat liver and turnips. Oh, dear me. Oh, dear me. They've got to be here somewhere. Now, where are my sour balls? They're the secret ingredient that makes my stew really sing. Oh, oh, yes, I remember. They're way in the back of the lower cabinet. Be a good boy and find them for me. Way, way in the back? Oh, oh, okay. We have been here for the last ten minutes, watching Bobby the Explorer, as he and Captain Squash attempt to retrieve the magical sour balls. They are the Bobby. only ones brave enough to reach them by climbing Mount Hollander. Careful, Bobby! Don't let her strain yourself. <laughs> Using your noodle explorer, Bobby. Explorer Bobby is a genius. They're right over the jar of magic sour balls. Uh oh, there's a problem. That's the egg that always jams. Uh oh, are we in trouble now? Not me, Bobby. I can fly. <laughs> Bobby, are you all right? Yeah. Are you gonna scold me? Well, of course not. Things break all the time. Does that mean we're not gonna have to make the stew? Oh, no. I would never disappoint you like that. I know how much you're looking forward to a nice, big bowl full of turnips and liver for dinner. That's why we're going down to the mall right now to buy some more sour balls. Oh, you're just so cute, Bobby. <laughs> Eddie, Aunt Ruth, there's your cute. 
field sure does make your face sweaty. You worry, sweetie. You're gonna be all right. You're with your Aunt Ruth. Now, tuck in and stay close. Excuse us. Coming through. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Out of my way. This is great. Youngster, crime doesn't pay. Uh, hey, that was some move. Ooh, yeah, couldn't have done better myself. I uh, don't get a kid or sure. You could do the best. No, no, no. no you're yes, the best. You no, no, you, 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 I used to be Madame Amazing, the first professional female wrestler there ever was. Wow. Do you know more stuff like that? Or work on somebody like Derek? Will you show me how to do it, will you? Will you? And this is a picture of me with Bambi, the bone crusher. And she thought she was such hot stuff. Well, I showed her. Took her three falls out of four in under six seconds. Wow. <laughs> Sure, sweetie. It's as easy as pie. Okay, put your arm around the neck like this. Take a You have to make the noise. Oh, oh, oh! Look at that. Boy, that roof, this is really fun. I'll get it. Hello? Hey, Bubble, just calling to cheer you up. I know what a terrible time you're having. Well, not really. And Ruth and I are... Don't worry. I'll be there first thing in the morning to pick you up for Sid's grand opening. Uh, uh, Uncle Ted? Uh, could, could you maybe come in the afternoon? I, I kind of want to stay at Aunt Ruth's longer. I'm, I'm having fun. You're, you're what? Hey, Bobo, is she making you say that? Is she twisting your arm? Yes. How did he know? That does it. I'm coming right over. Okay. I got in trouble with Aunt Ruth because I told her the truth when she didn't ask me. Now Uncle Ted's mad because I told him the truth when he did ask me. Boy, this true stuff is really hard to figure out. Well, Bobby, I think we learned a real important lesson on today's show. What's that? That no matter how much we think we know other people, there's always something about them that we don't know. I bet I know something about you. What's that? You love to dance the merengue music. How do you know that? Never mind. <laughs> Hit it, Felipe!